Hello there. I hope this video finds you in good health and in good spirits. My name is Portia Laiwola and I'm a writer, a performer, an educator, a curator, a black futurist, and um, I write poems about the black diaspora and water and queer intimacy. Um, I love to cook and I am known to devour a well-written piece of science fiction if I get the chance. Um, I'm an MFA candidate at Emerson College and I'm the Poet Laureate for the city of Boston. Um, and this mini craft talk is uh, based on a workshop I wrote um, just about memory and omission. And it comes from the idea that memory is imperfect, right? Scientists say um, that when we think about memories and when we remember something, it's actually different than how it happened, right? And so as a writer, we often write about our memories and, you know, I'm just wondering what happens if we lean more into the imperfections around our memories, if our writing lean more into that. Um, and so um, I first actually like to start with a game, if that's okay. Um, it's something you probably all know, it's called Two Truths and a Lie. Um, and your goal is to guess which one is the lie. So I wrote them down. I'll start one. Last year, I traveled to Lagos, Nigeria to visit my father. Two. Last year, I took a solo trip to London for a week. Three. Last year, my partner and I vacationed in Rome and Venice. Which one do you think is the lie? Okay, so what if I told you <clears throat> that that didn't actually matter, at least not right now. Um, really what matters is like the idea of speculative memoir, right? That's what I've been calling it, this um, speculation around our memories, of filling in the blanks around memories of Maybe some might call it lying, I don't know. Um, but what happens if we did that, if we played with the reader, um, if we told something that was very close to the truth, but maybe not quite, right? Um, a good uh, short story by Amy Hempel has an unreliable narrator. It's called The Harvest. Check it out. Um, the narrator withholds information, lies and comes clean, um, and overall is just unreliable, right? But what ways can we create uh, more embellishments in our writing that is not lying? Um, I wanna turn to something called aesthetic distance. I'm gonna read a passage. It's a little long, but I hope you can stick with me. It comes from an essay by Eleanor Wilner, and it's called The Closeness of Distance or Narcissus as Seen by the Lake. In our common and urgent project as late 20th century poets to write close to the bone, to celebrate our real lives in the body and in the world, to speak in the language of everyday life, to bring poetry down to earth, to relocate the meaning in dance of molecular matter of which we and the world are made and to offer an anecdote to the high-flown diction and calculating detachment of unregulated corporate interests who downsize human value. For all these good and sufficient reasons, I think we may at times have forgotten that imagination that the instrument of our art, of our invention, our way out of a daily repetition requires, absolutely requires distance. Wilner, Wilner goes on to talk about aesthetic distance and um, the absence of ego and how that creates empathy, right? And so it's how do we write these stories? How do we write these memories that engage our, our readers, that calls our readers to have empathy and not just our readers, but ourselves. How do we write these close memories with empathy for ourselves, with forgiveness for ourselves? And we do that with aesthetic distance. And sometimes you create aesthetic distance by embellishing in the lie. Um, sometimes um, you, you do it by writing stories that are so crucial to your life, but maybe you weren't there for, right? The distance exists in your own absence, right? Jasmine Ward um, and her her uh, memoir writes about her parents meeting and she was never there for that, but she does it with such detail, you know? And um, 
one prompt I have for you, one writing prompt as you get out of here, is to write a story about a scar that you've gotten. Um, think about the scar. Tell us everything you can, um, how you got it, when you got it, maybe some words that were said when you got it. Um, but you only get to use two pronouns. Go.